Okay. So uh, the the goal of this uh, exercise that uh, we are doing together today is try to apply uh, on a practical case uh, what we learned about the need, need, defined, the need finding uh, phase, okay, like uh, uh, we discussed in the, in the last couple of, uh, of lectures. Um, so actually, we try to take an example project. I, I try to invent some sort of a project that could be different uh, uh, enough uh, from, uh, uh, from yours. Uh, and uh, um, we will uh, say, try to play you know, the game of uh, designing the, the need finding process. Uh, we are not, of course, executing the need finding, the observation interview, but at least we, we reason, reason together about uh, how to uh, develop them. Um, uh, to answer uh, Manuel, uh, I will share the slides after because we will be uh, building them together. So I actually have a couple of slides, only two slides, and then all the rest uh, is the work that we are going to do. So there's nothing uh, yet to share. But at the end, I will share the slides with the contributions uh, from the uh, from the exercise. Right. Um, so we just uh, remember the uh, the need finding tools that we want and uh, try to draft a plan for observation and for interview. Um, and for the interview, we, we remember that uh, we, we have two steps. One is uh, defining the process, uh, how and where to whom, and the other is the interview tool, which actually is the set of questions that we are going to ask and the, the script of the, interview, of the interview itself. Um, that of course is an is an important part of the general interview process. Uh, when I talk uh, about tools, uh, uh, it, it it isn't always about computer tools, okay, or software. In many cases, it's just a, a, an instrument, uh, uh, like a list of questions or a list of items and so on, uh, that we use for executing the task. And uh, I'd like this to be as much as possible an interactive exercise. So please uh, be active. I hope you had a good coffee before the lecture so that uh, let's say we can be active and I will listen to your suggestion. That's why I don't have a solution already. I'd like to, to build it with you and with your contribution so that together we can, uh, like if we were you know, a big, uh, say, discussion group uh, trying to develop uh, uh, this kind of uh, defining process. Uh, and uh, as an example project, I try, I'm proposing this for today's exercise. Uh, I try, I put, of course, the project in the format in which you were asked uh, to, to present your projects. Uh, um, and I try to select uh, a topic which is easy enough for, uh, for each of us. So it's easy for us to imagine uh, or, uh, the, the characteristics of the target users, at least. Mm -hmm. So the definition of the project uh, that we, we have been assigned, let's say, uh, to work uh, is that we would like to help uh, university students uh, studying from home to better engage with their teachers and peers. Okay, so this, this is our goal. I'm trying to, we have this population uh, and we, uh, we know what they're doing, they're studying from home and we want to help them to have a higher engagement, a better engagement, a better interaction or whatever uh, with their teachers and peers. Mm -hmm. uh, teachers, uh, of course, and peers, other students uh, that are uh, with them in the same, in the same course. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is the statement, uh, the general statement, uh, maybe spend some time, uh, we need to spend a bit, uh, some time in uh, analyzing the two key ingredients here, which are the target users and the activity. Mm -hmm. um, so let's start from the target users, which is the easier one. Sorry, uh, let's me, let me move the PowerPoint right here so that we can edit it uh, uh, directly together. I think that's a way of increasing the size. Not, not much more. OK, uh, so this is our target group. Uh, is it clear? Uh, do we need to specify more? Uh, do we need uh, uh, to add some details? Uh, uh, the idea we, we is here is to understand uh, um, if we are able to identify precisely which are the persons that fall into our target group. Is this definition, university students studying from home, uh, uh, precise enough? Uh, you know that we are not identifying a set of people, uh, persons with names, uh, first name and last name. 
uh, we are defining any person that falls into this filter, into this category, into this definition. Okay. Uh, so, is there any relevant information that we want to add, that we need to add to specify better? Maybe to narrow it down? Okay, so uh, one suggestion is uh, focusing on, on the language. So are they all uh, international students? Or uh, all from the same? And this, of course, uh, uh, identifies two different uh, targets okay one is just all italian all american or french students and uh, in other cases it's a mix mixed classroom with international students where of course the communication issue will be uh, more difficult naturally hmm? uh, do they follow the lecture live um, this is not okay uh, i it's not really the definition of the users Rather, it's more definition of uh, some activity uh, they have uh, that they are doing. Okay, uh, so in general, this is something that maybe we will see in the in the definition of of the activity, hmm? whether they follow the lecture or, or live or not, because it's uh, how they study, not who they are. Hmm? Um, and of course, in this definition of engage, we will discuss about whether it's live, it's offline, and so on. So it's not that uh, you are a different student, uh, you are or, or are not in this group, uh, whether you are following live or in a recorded form, okay? Uh, of course, we, you will do something different. So the activity will be different, but uh, you will be always uh, yourself, okay? So I think this uh, will, we will keep this uh, suggestion by Andrea. Uh, for the next uh, slides, uh, basically. Uh, are they freshmen or not? Okay, so. Um, freshmen, let's, let's, make, let's write all the notes, then uh, freshmen. Then are they uh, well equipped? Uh, I, I, as I imagine uh, technically well equipped. Um, and uh, yeah, question of wh wh which kind of faculty? Mm -hmm. And uh, do they have a common foundation? I think uh, it's uh, uh, more or less the same question from the faculties. Uh, or is, you, is there something different that you want to add? When you mean saying uh, when you're saying that they have a common foundation, you mean the common let's say, major or background that they're following. Okay, so let's say faculty slash major slash, slash discipline or topics and so on. No, we understood it, um, we understood. Um, okay, uh, other issues are here are age, are the uh, I, I wrote new question marks okay because uh, we need of course to, to, to define them and uh, international students uh, we have a, a different take on the issue of international students uh, that uh, may be the language issues but may also be uh, time zone issues right and they have uh, and uh, uh, another point is uh, the disabilities. Okay, so we see that we, no, when we stop thinking for a moment, uh, a category that at first, at first sight uh, uh, looked like it was well-defined, uh, it now starts becoming more fragmented or multifaceted uh, where we have different, uh, uh, let's say, I wouldn't call them divisions by distinctions, okay, depending on whether. Uh, so um, what, what should we do at this point, okay? So we are designing something. We are uh, thinking about one project. And so we should uh, reason about these categories 
and ask ourselves, are these categories, okay, they exist. Are they relevant to us? Do we expect uh, that the activity, so engaging with our teachers and peers, uh, will be affected by some of these definitions or not? Hmm? Because some of them probably will not be affected too much. Hmm? University students usually are in the range uh, 20 to 30, more or less, okay? And so probably the age, uh, a university student of 20 years uh, maybe uh, is similar. Uh, oh, I don't see the reason why you should behave uh, differently from a student of 30 years, probably. Hmm. So I would think that this uh, category age uh, is not limiting a limiting factor, a qualifying factor. Okay, so in this case, I would say probably, probably hmm, would not affect uh, uh, the activities that we are trying to improve. So the question is, do I need to, for improving to better, so this is our goal, not better engaging with teachers and peers. Do I expect uh, to do something different uh, or that engaging with different teacher is will be different from a, for a student of 20 and for a student 28? Maybe not, probably not. So, or maybe the distinction would be minor. So at this point, uh, uh, I would not consider this distinction as relevant, okay? Uh, and of, but of course, uh, I would say as long, uh, but uh, remain, but uh, say in range 20 to 30, approximately. Because if we are taking into account even maybe uh, seniors that will study the university for their second or third degree or after their retirement, uh, that will be different. Okay, we don't see any different within a reasonable range. So we are in some way restricting, this is one possible choice, okay? Um, we are restricting our target into a, a range where we don't see any further distinction inside this range. Hmm? Uh, it's, it's a choice, of course. In the initial definition, we don't have all the information. We are putting them together. Uh, disabilities, of course, disabilities, is uh, uh, we cannot uh, say the same, of course, because disability will for sure affect uh, their acti the way in which they are carrying on the activities. Okay, so the, here we cannot just dismiss it like that. We need to make a choice. Um, include them, are, are they included or not? Are they considered or not? Hmm? We cannot, of course, in any case, do um, do um, find solution for everybody every time. So we cannot consider uh, the universe of possibilities. We need to make choices, of course, design choices. Okay. So this exercise is also say for uh, making it explicit that we are deciding to include some groups uh, and exclude some other groups. Hmm? Probably if we decide to include the students with disabilities, uh, we will need probably to be much more strict uh, on other categories, okay? Because there are many difficulties for including students with disabilities and they are, they are um, special individual needs. So uh, that would be uh, complex by itself uh, and we don't want to make it more complex in another case. So we'll take simplifying rules. Uh, otherwise, we can say, okay, let's assume for the moment that we are not taking into account students with disabilities. Not that they did, I'm not saying that they don't exist or they don't have needs. But in this first maybe um, need finding exercise, we maybe are not considering them. Uh, so we need to, we have limited resources, limited time always. So we need to have a trade off. We cannot say, okay, well, let's consider both international and national students. And we consider also the time zones to be different. And we consider both freshmen and experienced users. And also both the technical equipped and the technically not non-equipped one and so on. We will have so many variability, vari variables 
that uh, will never be able to uh, to cover all of them. Not even we will not. He will also find difficulties in finding uh, two or three students for each combination of categories, right? So uh, all of them, are, all of these uh, questions are valid. All of these distinctions are valid. We must choose which one to keep in our design and which ones just to, let's say, to drop or to simplify to say, okay, let's uh, assume we are not taking, for example, um, to account this problem, this issue. And so in our new finding, we will focus our attention on students without disabilities. Okay. Or maybe, Hello. yes, and so we will focus our attention on students with disabilities. So it's a, it's a choice. We cannot do both, okay? So, sure. yeah. Hello. No. Um, sorry, I'm closing the mics for a couple of people. But if you want to speak, of course, uh, you're welcome. Okay, the mics are, are open and enabled for you. Um, let's say, example, uh, let's take the, the, the freshman into account, okay? Of course, the approach of a freshman uh, will be different from a student of, for the third or fourth year because we, they already know how the university works and they have uh, no match my, many of their friends. So I think this is also a qualifying issue. So uh, our target group will be primarily freshmen or primary experienced users, or we are targeting something that works for both of them, or maybe something that works uh, where you know experienced users could help freshmen to to integrate themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, again, this is the same uh, uh, issue as as we had here. We need to make a choice. Okay, the make a choice. The choice is uh, uh, let's assume they are all like freshmen. Let's assume that they are all more experienced, and or let's try to and so we we'll design a system for one category. More or less, it will work also for other categories, but the needs will be different. For example, for freshmen, the need of of finding a group of people to work is much stronger than from a person that already has some some. Uh, acquaintances uh, during the years uh, uh, at, at the university. Hmm? Uh, so maybe we could make this a, a yes in this case. Hmm? So we consider both. Yes means uh, both freshmen and experience students hmm? or senior, hmm? let's say. Um, this means we, we decided to consider both categories. So we had a category that we found it's, it was relevant and we decided to include both of them. Let's remind this because when we plan the, the observation and when we plan the interviews, we need, we need to include some of the, of the students of the first category and some students of the second category. Otherwise our observation would not cover the whole uh, target group. So every time we are more inclusive at this stage, yes, we also consider this aspect, uh, the, it, it doubles basically the number of uh, interviews or the number of observations that we need to do. Because if we really think that they, are, they will yield different results and we want to cover both, we need to observe people that are different in this regard. Okay. Um, Martin is asking if they work in group, uh, we'll see them in the activities, okay? Whether they engage individually or in group. So right now we are just, we are focusing on the characteristics of the students themselves, long, not on the way they study, okay? How they study is the next step. Um, and the year is the same for all of this. I would say, let's assume yes, in this case, it could be no, and then it will be totally different organizing something that is rich online with uh, video or good bandwidth or something that just runs on maybe WhatsApp, which is a very low common technology that everybody could have. It would be a nightmare probably, but uh, uh, it could work in some way. So whether we decide yes or no, it will be different. Uh, this one is a, is a big assumption. Do you think that the The faculty affects uh, the way 
So I, I sorry, I can read it in this into your suggestion. I can read it in two ways. First is uh, the faculty or the background of the major affects uh, the um, the way or the familiarity or the ease uh, by which these people use technology. So a major for uh, mathematics or physics or chemistry or engineering will have no problems in using computers to do their stuff. This is one interpretation. The second interpretation would be uh, the type of study, the type of activity, uh, the type of uh, study that an engineer has to do is very different from maybe a student of, of philosophy. So where maybe they only have to discuss, only, not sorry, not only, they have mostly to discuss uh, and to write and to read. And in engineering, we have to make exercises, write formulas, uh, make drawings and so on. So do we see this distinction from the, uh, let's say the, um, ease of using technology or from the kind of uh, um, of, 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 of active or, or or study methods basically hmm? uh, you know andrea labs exercises is a concept which is limited okay hmm? people doing uh, probably philosophy they don't do labs okay um, so um what we could say, probably, again, here is again a choice to make. Um, yes, and art majors need to share drawings, okay, which are uh, probably even more uh, complex to share than a technical drawing, okay. Um, I would say probably that we can go for a STEM-like. Uh, topics uh, where there is need uh, to uh, share designs uh, okay and exercises no not need to share i mean uh, they use designs labs uh, exercise etc And this also includes art majors, for example. It doesn't include literature, for example. It doesn't include language learning. That would be probably a totally different, uh, they will have probably totally different needs and so on. Hmm. So why do I make this uh, choice? Because probably for us, uh, it will be easier to find some uh, students with these uh, uh, characteristics, okay? Uh, while if we are, uh, I don't know, uh, um, targeting something like uh, students uh, studying uh, uh, Eastern languages like Chinese, Japanese, Korean, and so on. Uh, for us from here, from the Polytechnic of Torino, it will be difficult to find people actually studying these kind of topics in uh, our university. And so it will make uh, it unfeasible, but it is just a practical issue. Since we have the choice, uh, we can do that. In general, this is part, uh, this uh, target group definition also affects the marketing of our idea okay uh, depend this will is you know, linked with who are our customers our users who's going to let's say pay you know, our uh, technology investment so right now we are quite free to make some choices for simplifying our life uh, or for steering our project in the direction that we like more um, Okay, here we can we could say that we are uh, they we can share one language and uh, maybe one time zone or let's say similar time zones to make it simpler. So we cannot make it complex in all the dimensions. Okay. So that's, that's one possible possible choice, of course. Okay, we could uh, stay here and discuss. And all uh, all the possible choices, or yes or no, are legitimate, are very equally valid, as long as we are aware that we are shaping in some way our target group. And then in the rest of the development, we stick with these definitions. We are starting to know, to imagine our users. Okay. Like I'm imagining you, by the way, I, for, for me, you are all black rectangles in the screen. And uh, I try to imagine that somebody behind that is dying, doing something, this uh, replying to the question and so on. 
I'm picturing myself uh, uh, a real person. And even here, we are doing the same, okay? In our mind, we are start to picture these people, imagine their life, what they are doing and so on. Okay, the next step would be uh, the activity. I said uh, the activity is a very, I used a, a very general word, engage. Engage means uh, everything, okay? Everything done together in this context. I try to use this in this way. So it's not a specific task. Huh? It would be wrong to write uh, to better, I don't know, a chat during the lectures or to better uh, work on a shared document. That those would be specific tasks, okay? And there are hundreds of different specific tasks that we are we are in, we can we may imagine for our our friends here that we we got to know here, okay? Uh, <clears throat> and we don't know which tasks are more important for them. That's a whole need finding uh, reason to be. We are doing the need finding because we don't know yet which are the tasks that are more important for these users. So we need to define a general activity and then discover how these users think about these activities and uh, uh, as a consequence, uh, how, which tasks uh, we are going to improve for them. <clears throat> Maybe we find that uh, uh, you know they would like uh, a way of, uh, while they're following the lectures of speaking to each other in an easier way without the professor seeing. Is this a need or not? I don't know. Is this a need that is already satisfied by the current tools, by the current environments? Okay, if yes, we don't care. We need to identify the needs that are not currently satisfied. And then we, uh, we will try to to build a system around them, to find a solution about uh, around them, okay? So right now, engage for me could be uh, during classes or during labs or during exercises or during homeworks or during, not during exams, so let's, uh, let's try to do them uh, individually. No, but also in exams, and sometimes you, you are doing some uh, group, group activity or communication during exams and so on, legally. And uh, uh, so there are different moments, okay? And the classes may be, let's say, live classes, like, like you, you said before, or recorded classes. Uh, <laughs> just one thing that came to my mind, you know, all the, um, Netflix uh, streaming service uh, introduced uh, quite recently the possibility of uh, uh, different people to watch the same uh, movie or the same uh, TV show in a synchronized way. So everybody is looking at the same moment uh, and they're synchronized even if they are uh, in different places. Okay, it's a way of engaging together in an activity which is really individual. So looking at a video that has been recorded before maybe the students would need to do that they would find them maybe easier because they you know they can help each other they can feel together uh, or they just don't care okay i i, I don't want to do that uh, because i'm looking at the video at uh, twice the speed and uh, i'm looking at the three and the three am in the morning or whatever so this is one aspect where we don't know hmm, where the real problems lie we could decide to limit our attention to some of these uh, moments, or we could decide to leave it open and then listen to the users, whether they push our uh, attention to the live classes or to the labs or whatever. Okay, uh, if we decide it's better as much as possible, uh, in this case, to leave it open mm -hmm. so that we will be guided by the feedback we have from the, from the uh, students. Okay, uh, I, I, I rewrote this sentence probably four different times to avoid uh, uh, already hinting towards uh, the lectures or hinting towards uh, the synchronous or asynchronous modality and so on. Hmm. Uh, and so we, in, uh, in developing our uh, uh, need finding interviews, we should also try to avoid the hinting at one solution rather than another that, because that would hide in a way uh, their information. Um, 
Enrico is uh, uh, suggesting to consider how they interact. Okay, so uh, so interaction with voice. You saying text, video. I don't know why it's why it's red. Let's make it black. Mm. Um, this is actually, I think, uh, it's not a declination uh, and uh, uh, of the activity, but it's um, analysis of how we can solve it. Mm. So I will I will keep it for later. Uh, I cannot try immediately to understand. Okay, uh, I couldn't try to understand whether a student prefers to interact with voice or text. But it's a uh, it's a difficult question to answer. Maybe the text with the teacher or the voice with you when when we are among peers and so on. But we cannot ask students uh, to design our system. Hmm? In a way, this should be part of the solution and not part of the of the um, of the of the question. What we could ask, uh, since we are uh, trying to find the needs of the users, uh, are there any moments in which they need to use the voice? Are there any moments in which they need to use the video? Are there any moments in which they need to use the text or other kind of communication? And then based on this information, we build the system and we decide whether it will be, you know, uh, I don't know, a, a Discord based audio, uh, mainly audio system or a Zoom like a video system and so on. Hmm? Okay, so uh, we are trying to understand uh, what kind of uh, what types of media they need to interact with okay so what uh, uh, media interaction is uh, needed for example this one which doesn't mean that we are asking them whether to include this inside our project or not do they feel the need for that it will be difficult to write a question about this okay we will need to Maybe ask in a in the reverse way. How do you imagine interacting with your peers? Which is a better question than do you prefer voice or text or video? Okay. And then based on how they prefer, how they need, how they re respond, then we design our system. Okay. So we should always try in this phase to refrain from talking, uh, thinking about specific tasks, for example, submitting the labs uh, solutions uh, or grading the exams. They are all important tasks, but we don't know which ones we will focus on. And also we should refrain <clears throat> from features. The system has a textual chat. The system has an audio channel. This is a feature of the system. Do we need it or not? We don't know yet. That's why uh, we are doing the need finding, just to find out which are the tasks that we want to support, <clears throat> and later on, which are the uh, features <clears throat> that will be that need to be implemented you know, to support those tasks. Um, uh, are we consider Andrea is asking is suggesting are we considering only activities during the curricular hours or even study groups? Uh, in general, yes, uh, it's another distinction. Okay, so let's say during uh, only during uh, official hours or slash uh, uh, even in self study or self paced. Uh, activities. So uh, for example, um, again, we cannot ask the question like this, okay, this is just for us for understanding the activities, then we need, of, of course, to, to, um, to reverse the question when we ask it, we cannot ask it that, or that, okay, so also framing the question will be important. But before we need to understand what we want to know. Hmm? Uh, 
uh, for example, there were some several students that are complaining that the um, Portaleda Didactica, the big blue button system for the virtual classrooms cannot be activated. New virtual classroom cannot be opened by the students. So when they want to uh, work together, they need to use some external tool, which is not the official Polytechnic ones. And this is a, a, a critique that I, I heard many times. Okay, so that means that there's a need there. Okay, uh, in in some specific case, uh, so that could be considered. Uh, so there are some activities that are, that are organized by the teachers, the classes, the exercises, the labs, and so on. So we know when and we know who is there. But apart from that, there's a lot a lot of time that the students have. They devote to the study. Of course, they. We are talking about studying, we are not talking about playing chess together or whatever. That would be important, interesting, but a different, a different need and would require different tools also. Um, so should, uh, should we invest more on the first part or on the second one? I don't know. We want to find out. So all of these are just possible answers to the question I, I want to ask. I'm listing them not to, uh, you know, in the target group, uh, we decided to narrow it down because it's our choice. In the activity, we are just trying to imagine how this activity can be structured in different ways, but we really cannot choose. It's not ours to choose. It's our users to tell us what they need and what they want. Okay, so I'm not uh, deciding here yes or no for any of this. And just trying to list and with your help of finding the alternative, the possibilities that will help me to try to gather this information from the users. I'm not doing an interview just to know the, the person, okay? I make an interview just to extract some information from these people. And I will prepare some questions in order to get some of this information. And probably I also get some information about A, B and C uh, that I, I never thought before because maybe their responses will make me discover some dimensions, some alternatives that really didn't come to my mind. And it's normal, okay? I should be open to that, prepare for that. Um, okay, Coralie is, is asking, well, do, so we just interact with these people and uh, uh just ask questions and talk to these people during the interview and uh, yes basically we want to interact with the users and understand what they want but uh, um, it's very difficult uh, to do that in a totally free format okay let's have a chat about yeah you can start in this way but at least we should have uh, some some points that we really want to ask now that's why we are structuring that so there's some information that uh, we want to know and we'll try to get. And some information we only discover as we go. Hmm? And uh, so right now we have a narrow set of, more narrow, more defined set of users and a very wide set of questions. Okay, we could, we could probably go, go on uh, for a bit, but you, you understand the, the methods, right? Um, and so we, need to get the responses from this. Among uh, so all the different ways in which this activity, the activity just engaging with teachers and peers. But by the way, another big distinction is teachers or peers, uh, which is linked to this one, but not exactly the same. Do they need more need to interact uh, of tool to interact with the teachers or more need to uh, moments or ways or modalities to interact uh, with their peers? Mm -hmm. And all of these, of course, are interlaced because homeworks uh, probably don't involve the teachers and, 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 and the, the classes uh, don't, uh, don't always involve the teachers and not, very, not always the peers and so on. Of course, they are interlaced. But uh, this wide activity can be shaped in many different ways. All of them are valid. We don't know which, one, which ones are more important to our users. And that's why we are doing this neat finding. And uh, as a quick summary, I found this document 
and just put in the the link here in the chat if you want to to have a look um, let me move it here uh, which is a short document that will tell us some suggestions about what to do in need finding okay <laughs> this is a very very creepy picture of uh, a person looking at the boy who is uh, eating a sandwich and so they are you know, staring at the boy there and it's uh, uh, <laughs> a bit uncomfortable for the boy of course okay let's not let's not do that literally uh, but we we want to observe a user doing something and to you know, get information from that um, the purpose of all this uh, is uh, uncovering latent needs so something that is your need but is latent is not satisfied in a way by the current tools by the current situation by the current uh, uh, devices uh, or whatever uh, and also try to uh, in this document they are using a lot the word empathy uh, means feeling the same so understanding what they feel understanding what they think okay uh, also on the emotional level okay that will make them feel less anxious more relaxed more productive and, and whatever and uh, okay here th there are some suggestions of, of the type uh, of information that we can gather stories uh, pictures uh, uh, quick sketches of what they are doing and what they want to do uh, very interesting are the quotation of the user so that when the user will tell you a story will tell you uh, some anecdote so we tell you some some proverb or some saying that they are developing in their group, uh, they are very important because if they took the time to remember it or if the story took the time to be um, shared among a group of people, then that will represent uh, uh, a real uh, um, uh, say asset, information asset that you need. Uh, for example, for you students of Polytechnic, if I'm talking about the three blinking dots, uh, you know immediately what I'm talking about, okay? When the virtual classroom doesn't load, and so that if you hear some words, uh, some uh, slogans, uh, some quotes, some stories, those are important because those uh, are the result of the pain of the user that has been filtered through, and then became maybe a joke uh, or became a, a slogan or or, uh, and so that's uh, important information that we can get, and and of course we need to dig deeper to understand what is what's behind that okay but we should always try to remember them if, if they're saying something strange uh, that looks familiar to them but not to me that's one hint uh, that there's some information interesting information for um uh, for discovering uh we may also decide to do recordings of the interviews or the observations in some cases but uh, uh, in many cases, there will be uh, too probably longer to to listen again, and uh, uh, and so we uh, not of, not often do that uh, because if you're recording something, that you don't need to, and you don't have the time to rehearse it, and and so maybe it's not. Uh, but in some cases, you can record the interview and then listen it again a second time, and so on. And also interesting if there are any physical objects. So also when uh, when people are using some physical objects, let's show me what you are using. Uh, it's also important because we understand better how they use them. And so uh, we are we have some suggestion about uh, uh, what are the the key ingredients for getting a good uh, need finding uh, phase. So finding the good people to help you, of course, uh, interesting people that are open to discuss and so on, uh, meeting them in a in a in a good environment, uh, in a in a place where they feel confident, where they feel at home, in their feel in their environment, uh, uh, being uh, flexible towards their, their needs. Okay, if they want to speak about something, don't force them to think to speak about something else because maybe what they want to speak for for them uh, is their main problem and so on. And uh, we already know that this can be structured into observation and interviews. Uh, and about observation, uh, let's just remember what is the, the goal of the observation phase. 
Mm -hmm. So before, before structuring an interview is much uh, uh, better if we can have a look of, at what people are doing, okay? And uh, we want to see the users and le learn about their experience. Uh, so try to learn or see what they are doing. And here we have some methods, okay? We, we, in the slides, we only have two, the two main, the two opposite ones, become, become one of them or become the wall. Of course, uh, there are uh, many other uh, methods, the many other no, uh, alternatives. Uh, I, I find it very interesting this sentence here. The most important thing about need finding and design thinking is that we look without knowing what we are looking for. So it's not a very structured activity. We are there and we are trying to be like sponges, open to receive information and uh, try to spot a problem or an opportunity when we see it. Uh, so we trust that we, are, we will be able to spot this moment, this activity, this task where we say, okay, look there. There we can do something because I, we see this, per, this person are doing something in a bad way, are doing something to a slow way with too many errors. They are not, we see they are not satisfied with how they are doing and so on. Mm -hmm. And the, the, uh, we trust our ability to define the problem will emerge during the need finding process. That's why we had many uh, bad comments about your projects, uh, okay? There are not comments about you, of course, about the projects, uh, because in many proposals, uh, you already hinted at the solution. Ah, we want to do this. We need a search engine for finding that. No, we, you don't know what you need. You will discover what you need. What you know is uh, that you are a group of users and we want to observe them in some part of their activity. Okay, and so, uh, uh, let's spend uh, some some time here in the uh, in planning for our exercise, the observation part, and then we devote some time tomorrow for planning the interview. Okay, since we only have uh, eight minutes left, more or less. Uh, so let's go back to um, the slides uh, and uh, planning an observation. Okay, so uh, we have uh, some budget in terms of time and time translates uh, in the, the number of subjects that we want to observe and uh, for how long and how deep we want to observe them okay if you are uh, two two persons and uh, you, you you want to devote uh, maybe two days okay to this observation then you have maybe four person days you can split the day in two and you can observe eight different persons for half a day each for example and so you will have a very long observation a very a more normal a good observation of three four hours per person and we will have in total eight observations if you want to observe more people you need with the same amount of available time you need to observe uh, uh, them for a shorter time or observe them in group more people at the same time it really depends on the activity right now here we are talking about students uh, studying from home so we are mainly observing them individually because they are not in the same place i cannot at the same time observe two different people if they are in their homes um <clears throat> so uh, where do are we planning to observe them? How many? Hmm? Uh, how many people are we planning to observe, and so on? So probably, let's remember that we decide to consider both freshmen and senior, and we decided that we didn't want to focus on all the other diversities. So at least we, we, we need a group of freshmen, of freshmen, and a group of uh, uh, senior students. Okay, so that we can analyze the needs coming from both categories. Uh, maybe this group could be, you know, three or four of them. 
and uh, three or four senior students, maybe, hmm? uh, that are in the same major category, in the same faculty, and so on that we decided before. Hmm? We don't need uh, maybe to observe 50 people. Some of them will, uh, will be enough. Uh, a general rule of uh, usability budget is not to spend all your money at once in one experiment. Uh, try to um, ma do many more observations, many more experiments, many more interviews with a smaller number of people. Of course, you have, if you have an, an, an unlimited budget, you could do a lot of observations with a lot of interviews with hundreds of people and so on. But usually, it's more efficient maybe to have two observations, one now and one in two months, maybe in the middle of the project with three, four people, instead of a very big one at the beginning, and, don't, and, and then you don't contact the users anymore. Hmm. Uh, so a small group, six, eight people to observe, it's already, it requires already a good investment in time. Uh, where? Uh, so uh, if you uh, want to, uh, if, you, if, if you are able uh, to, to, do, to go to them hmm, in their house, it would be better. Or other, otherwise you may connect uh, uh, say online observation online. Observation online observation is very mm, is very hard, okay, uh, because uh, you can only see what the camera gives you, and of course a front camera like this one is not useful at all because you see their face. You need something that takes at least the environment, the room, mm, so that you can look at the person where they are doing their their activity. Hmm. Um, Andrea is saying, if it's useful to observe a lecture so that we are more students at once uh, uh, with a small number of students with an interactive lecture and so on. So uh, if a lecture is, uh, in this case, we are 54, 54 students connected, 53 plus me uh, students connected. Uh, but if you are I'm observing some of you, I'm observing each of you individually. So uh, for example, uh, what uh, Andrea is doing is different from what uh, uh, Carlo is doing, is different from what Dario is doing in their home. Mm -hmm. uh, I cannot observe you at the same time, to do together. Huh? I can observe you in the same in interval of time, but they will be separate observation. If I want to do a synchronous observation of many users, uh, uh, I need more people to observe you. Okay, if I want to observe five people in the same lecture, I need five observers that observe each of, each of you. Okay, it's not like uh, when we are just looking while you are doing the exam, we have just a, okay, an idea that you are no, not doing any bad thing. We need to be a careful observation. So you need a, a dedicated observer from each of you. Mm -hmm. um, of course, if you see the people that are interacting in a synchronous way, Maybe there, there will be a different uh, say dynamics uh, from uh, the people that are working asynchronously or are not interacting. This is part uh, of what we did, what the, also we did here, live, uh, some live activities. Okay, so what Andre is saying here is uh, maybe from how we uh, follow the live classes, we can spot some pattern, we can find some information. Yes but uh, it's only one category here okay so the information that we gather from here maybe it's not valid from homeworks or from exercises and we still don't know whether these ones are more important than those so i would try to do a mix okay maybe if these three four people some of them i will observe them during a lecture some of them during a lab work or a group work I will try to, to distribute our bullets uh, into the different targets that we are trying to follow. Okay. And so it's not, a, it's not, a, um, so uh, in the round, if it's not possible, I try to observe online with uh, uh, maybe a wide, uh, a wide, 
wide view camera. Or maybe if you can go to their house, why not? When maybe some in uh, uh, live classes, live uh, activities, activities, some in, uh, how do I call them, uh, asynchronous activities. So I, I have uh, maybe three freshmen and three seniors. Uh, so, uh, and I see, I observe two of them in live activities and one in asynchronous activities, or one in a class and one in the lab and one the exercise. We try to split the, our, our assets uh, in the best way. Hmm? Um, uh, the what, of course, uh, is blank, sorry, because it's what we, are, uh, we want to find, okay? So it will be the output of the... What are we observing? We don't know. We just look and then we will take note of what we actually observe. And how, um, how we interact, we, how we pose ourselves uh, in this observation. Okay, do we join as students? Do we join as teachers? Do we just mm, connect and then tell them I, to not consider us, just forget about us? Will we interact with the students uh, just to see how they respond back? So if I want to know how the student chats among themselves during the lecture, maybe I go there and will chat with them. But in, a, in this way, I'm creating a behavior which is enforcing some kind of behavior that, that maybe is not uh, would not would not come out uh, if I were uh, if I weren't there. Hmm? So uh, these are the you know, the possibilities uh, and how we observe. Uh, we assume the role of the subject. So I I'm with you. I try to follow the lecture and trying to ask questions to the teacher and trying to chat with you while the teacher is speaking and trying to share the bad faces of the teacher uh, and create uh, internet memes uh, or whatever or I just uh, um, ask him from ourselves, or I'm just uh, uh, asking you to, to walk by me, say, okay, try to uh, help me follow this class, tell me what to do, and so on. So there are many, many ways. Uh, for example, if, see, in our case, probably we are going, we are forced to, be, to do an observation online, uh, will, will be probably and uh, non-intrusive, uh, external observation, okay, through a camera. So we just see what you do, uh, see what you do, and probably see what's in your screen. Also, if you are doing something, because maybe if, you have, if I have a wide view of your um, room, I don't see what you have on the screen, what you're writing. So the kind of information that I need to observe are these ones. And I will be, in this case, uh, invisible to you in a way. You know I'm there, but I'm passive. I'm not interacting with you during the activity. And so probably while I'm watching you, I will have some question. Why does it do that? Why didn't he reply, for example? OK? Um, and uh, uh, this question cannot be answered. I can only see the what, what you're doing, not why you're doing that, or why are you not doing something. And so at the end, I need to have a chat with each of you, of them, uh, about the reasons why you did or did not do some actions. Hmm. Um, uh, I read the comment from Andrea is saying that depends what you want to achieve. Uh, if you want to solve social problems about the interaction, it's, not, it's better not interact too much. But if we want to improve the technical aspect, we can interact. Uh, um, maybe it's too soon again, 
uh, to uh, think about the technical aspects. Uh, let, remember, let's read again here. Uh, we look without knowing what we are looking for. Okay, so we don't know whether the problem will be technical or not. We don't. We don't want to rush into technical solutions. Okay, because in many cases, in many cases, you are making the or some people are making the technical solutions more complex when actually the solution is a total, you know, on a totally different plane and totally different uh, methods. Okay. Uh, it's not making the solution the tech the maybe some tool more complex uh, but maybe getting a getting rid or something which is not working and do it in in a, in a different way okay um, i'm making an example uh, all the uh, you had the experience of doing the exams uh, with the tragic responders tool uh, this is a bad solution and there is no way you can make it better on the technical level. Okay, the exams are, are, are the problem with exams are a social, a social issue and not a technical issue. So there is no artificial intelligence, no cameras or no whatever that can turn uh, uh, students working on their computer into the perfect student, which is never cheating and which uh, nef uh, the nothing technically can go wrong and so on. So for the, all that domain is made of mistakes over mistakes. There's nothing about usability, about user experience there. Oh, this is just the anxiety of the teachers. The solution would be probably to change the way in which we are doing some exam. Okay, uh, do some projects, uh, do some uh, oral tests uh, and so on, where you don't need all that uh, kind of technicalities. Um, so, of course, we need both, uh, just to, to summarize this point, uh, and I read your last comment, uh, also, uh, we need uh, both moments in which you, we just observe passively and uh, where we are interacting for understanding. It depends on us and also depends on the type of users and the type of activities where these observing and asking are more interlaced so we are there and we are continuously asking yourself asking explanations or if they are separated we are observing for two hours and after two hours we take a coffee and we discuss about what you did both of them are always present observing understanding and then uh, speaking to get more information is it better for a person just to do their job normally and then uh, respond all the questions later? Or is it better to ask a question right on the spot when you see some behavior? It depends whether asking the question will make uh, the task uh, maybe more complex. They, they lose this, the, the, um, the stream of the, of, the, of the lecture, for example. Hmm? But uh, again, it's a matter of choices. Okay, We know that we have all these choices uh, and uh, uh, maybe in a group work, it's better to interact. In a lecture, maybe it's better just to observe, for example. I don't know which, which uh, there are possibilities. Okay. So in something like this, uh, we will get, uh, no, if we make it a, a bit cleaner, uh, we could make a sort of a half a page of our plan for observation. What is missing, of course, is finding the, in the, 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 the persons finding a time available for them for doing this observation and, and starting starting there okay there's not a, a real format about what we want to observe i will uh, uh, go to this uh, list here of uh, uh, maybe photos of what is happening a sketch of what they're doing uh, quotes and storing or what they're telling uh, and uh, and objects artifacts that may be software or hardware maybe there are people are, are using a lot of people are using a tool like, you know, I don't know, OBS for recording the lectures because the polytechnic recordings are not so reliable. So that's an important point. People are using an extra artifact, in this case, the software, uh, for solving some something that for them is a problem hmm? uh, in that specific case, in this specific context. So we are not talking about working on the polytechnic system. We are talking more in general, but just for as an example of why artifacts, objects, or specific softwares 
or specific devices that are important uh, uh, to, to better know the, the users. Okay, uh, so if you, if you want, uh, we could uh, stop at this point here and uh, we can finish uh, the exercise uh, tomorrow when we'll uh, do the second step of planning an interview, okay? So we imagine that tonight we are observing some students and tomorrow we'll have some feedback about what came out from the observations. And at that point, we'll have more information about which tasks, which needs we want to understand more. So we already had some hints, some hypotheses that we decided here when we try to analyze the type of activity, but then after the observation, probably we would have filled B, C, and D, and until K, and J, and Z. Uh, so a, a many more uh, aspects of these activities. And, uh, uh, and then we want to narrow down and uh, try to understand uh, their importance and the reasons using an interview. Hmm? So uh, let's spend the night in during the observation and uh, continue about uh, the, the interview in the, um, in the first part of the lecture of tomorrow. Okay, we spend uh, half of the lecture about that uh, and some time also about uh, uh, the, the next step would be task analysis. So that's a task analysis and just give the definition right now is uh, how to structure the activity of the user. So what are these general activities that for now has always been very, very generic uh, Right now we are narrowing down with, with observation, with interviews until we say, okay, what are the tasks and how are they are structured and where do they begin, where do they end? And so that they could be the containers of the feature of the system. So we are going uh, closer to the actual system that, are, that we are building and to the actual problem that we are proposing to solve. Okay. So, um, yes, I, I will upload these slides. Uh, later on today to the this evening hmm. um, okay i will stop uh, the recording now because now we are moving to the second part of the lecture sorry <laughs>